Hi everybody, it is the 1st of December 2022 and today we've had a big content drop for Armourer Forger on PC and Xbox with the ground support update which is bringing us a new playable area, the new island of Arland. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to read through the notes that come with this update and uh, yeah I'll probably do some more other videos where we actually dive in and have a look around. So today we at Bohemia Interactive are happy to announce the release of the ground support milestone update the first set of content featured from our public roadmap. Ground support delivers an entirely unique landscape to explore a cooperative multiplayer game mode new weapons and much more. Of course, this 0.9.7 update is also packed with a sizable list of critical fixes which we know it needs, stability optimizations, and other exciting improvements for both players and community modders. Admittedly, a game of this complexity requires a careful approach and a lot of seemingly invisible work related to its performance stability, which slows down the process of adding anything new. As such, our original plan didn't survive the first contact. Ground support, originally intended to be a single massive update, has been redefined as a series of smaller ones released over the upcoming months. Our goals regarding the content and features of Armour of Forger remain unchanged. Our focus instead has shifted to bring you smaller updates containing fixes, stable features and a variety of improvements more frequently with a priority on quality and stability. You may look forward to a steady flow of enhancements and occasional and occasional presents in the form of new toys or gameplay features. This smaller scope of particular updates will hopefully result in a much smoother experience with extensively tested and polished novelties. Don't worry though, after we've fulfilled our promises with the ground support milestone, we'll move on to the next greatly anticipated set of content, the Air Assault Update. And I think that's the one that comes with the official helicopters. So we're going to get the new island of Arlen. Now I'll put a link to these um, update notes in the description below this video, and then you can have a look at the uh, look at the uh, island as well. Armor Reforger ground support update key features. Arland. Arland is probably the most prominent addition. Spanning over a modest area of 16 square kilometres, it shall provide you with another diverse and picturesque armour world, ready for exploration and combat operations. It's situated in the Malden Islands archipelago, fairly close to the island of Everon, and is part of the Everon Socialist Republic. The island features a rural landscape with two picturesque villages and a windswept military area in which heaths and pine groves surround the vast military airfield with plenty of unique structures. A control tower, hardened aircraft shelters and underground bunkers. These distinct regions are separated by the wooded ridge reaching up to 148 metres above sea level, crowned by the communication station which is expected to see many clashes. Ireland features its own game master and conflict scenarios. Conflict has been adapted to the smaller scale of the island, resulting in more intense player versus player battles without compromising the importance of logistics and communications for victory. So that's good because, you know, I think we all know that conflict on Everon has been a bit of a hit and miss affair, hasn't it? Now, this is very exciting. Combat Ops, the first iteration of our new dynamic cooperative multiplayer oriented game mode, Combat Ops. Cooperation has become a valuable staple, a value staple experience of armor games, and we're excited to finally bring it in an interesting open world scenario in which up to six players team up to fulfill three objectives randomly scattered across the island and then exfiltrate. Although the challenge calls for team collaboration, this scenario is naturally playable by a single player. Now that's really exciting. That so a single player um, gameplay for Armor of Forger. The only other thing we've really had is the uh, tutorial. New weapons, the SA-58P and the SAV 762 by 39 assault rifles. Name the new standard issue service weapon for FIA soldiers. Players can now face off against this new set of heavy hitting weaponry or take it with them to ensure their victory. So the FIA, I think they're the independent people, aren't they, in Reforgia? The 4x20 carry handle scope. For those longer range engagements, the M16 rifles now have the option of an attached 4x20 magnification scope for enhanced performance on the battlefield. That's good, so you won't have to use a map, uh, a mod for that. So there's the island. Looks cool, doesn't it? There's the radar thing. Continue with other highlights from the ground support update. Here's a list of other important changes included in this 0.9.7 milestone. Scenario framework. Combat Ops has been created using the new Scenario Framework, which shall be immensely helpful to community scenario designers. 
This new function will allow users to create their own scenarios in Workbench while possessing minimal scripting knowledge, an easier way to create playable content. We will post a de detailed tutorial on our wiki soon. That's their wiki. We intend to polish and expand this system so that it could be useful as a general scenario logic in the other official game modes in the future. Damage and healing logic. The system of bleeding, healing and injuries has received quite an overhaul, including a rework of the structure of consumable items. Game masters can also adjust the health setting in the scenario properties or from the context menu on characters. Interesting to have a look at that. In-game session hosting, PC only. The game can host multiplayer sessions on a local machine allowing players to host and play the session. Network configuration, for example, opening ports and router is still up to the user. I think this means you can run a local server and play on it, I think. <laughs> okay, I think that's what it's saying. Driving manual, or driving manual. The realistic features of operating vehicles has been expanded. The option to use a manual gearbox in vehicles where it's available was added, and the game won't turn off the engine now while getting out of the vehicle. HUD elements for vehicles were enhanced by adding lights, handbrakes, and other indicators. Encumbrance of characters. The weight of each cartridge is now added to the magazine's weight. This has an effect on stamina and should force players to be even more considerate about their loadouts. Video graphics settings, Xbox. Very excited about this as well. I'll be doing an investigation into this. We listen to players' feedback about performance problems on Xbox. This version brings updated graphics settings for Xbox, which should help achieve stable performance on all versions of the console, because we want 60 frames a second. That's what we want, peeps. Voting improvements. Voting should be much easier now with the addition of a key to instantly cast a vote for an ongoing vote. Players can now only vote to kick a player of the same faction. Other improvements. Network traffic optimizations, audio sound changes, tweak controls, ooh, AI perception improvements, quality of life changes, and more. To see the full list of content, be sure to read our latest 0.9.7 changelog, where we'll everything has been added, changed, tweaked, fixed, and removed. Excellent. The ground support milestone update is now available for all owners of Armour Forge on Steam and Xbox. We look forward to bringing you more content soon, and thank you for your continued support on our journey. So, let's have a jump over to the changelog. Ah, here we go. Right, let's have a look. Ooh, we didn't want to do that, did we? F11, full screen. Added the Arlen terrain, added Arlen specific buildings, added the 4x20 carry handle for the M16, added combat op scenario, added the SA58 P and SA58V ARs, added airport signs and lights, added colour variants to structures and buildings, added Everon airport sign on its hangar, tweaked the UAS, now uses split wheels, doors, roof frame, or roof canvas, fixed transmitter station fix. Game. Added grouping of hit zones in damage and healing logic. An overhaul of bleeding, rework of structure of consumable items, fixing of healing of bleeding characters from GM and removing of redundant hit zones. Okay. Added switching between first person and third person now cancels aimed down sight. It's now possible to use healing items in a vehicle. Weapon inspection X rays weapon X ADS actions now interact with each other correctly. Added a manual gearbox. Added inspected gadgets now support user actions intended. There's the vote thing. New animations for the Russian radio. Flattening of grass under weapon at lower stances. Added rebindable action from putting away current selected item also available when driving a vehicle. Okay. Added RGD5 fuse pop. Added magazine weights are now calculated dynamically. Added direct indicators now show when rotating an entity. Antenna has now cost of building, added separate combo box, added hover over hit zone, hint in the inventory. Medical crates are now in HQ, voting countdown, additional variants of M15, M151, M998, M1025 added to US vehicle configs. Instant voting, key hints, radial menu for quick socks 5 to 10 on a gamepad controlled with right thumbstick. Okay, so this could be interesting. Radial menu for quick socks 5 to 10 on a gamepad controlled with the right thumbstick. So it looks like they have adjusted the controls on console, on gamepad, so it's going to be interesting to have a play with that. Uh, here we go. Change right thumbstick single click toggles free look. Right thumbstick hold triggers focus instead of free look while not driving. 
change stance adjustment and leaning forward from RB, RB plus right thumb to RB plus less thumb. Okay, so I think that's so that you can strafe while aiming. You think they would have put all the control changes together, wouldn't you? Okay. Well, I think what we're going to have to do is go in and check the controls, aren't we? Um, and see what's actually changed, actually in the game, and having a having a play. Okay, it's all interesting stuff. So there we go. The ground support update is now live for Armor Reforger on PC and Xbox. Dive in, check it out. Um, Armor Reforger, it's been a slow process, hasn't it? But I'm glad to see that the support is continuing and the road to Armor 4. Well, we're on our way. Anyway, that's from me. all from me. What do you think? Put your questions in the comments down below, and I will, of course, see you again soon.